Let's talk about the hip hinge in the baseball swing and how you can use it to generate explosive power and hit absolute moonshots just like this. As we know, power is generated from the ground up. And especially in the baseball swing, you need to use that energy that you get from the, your lower half to transfer through the torso into the upper half. And I'm going to show you how to do that with different exercises and different training modalities. Let's talk about hip hinge basics. So pretty much you want to have feet shoulder width apart, a slight knee bend, and you're going to be pushing your hips backwards. So um, this, think about this as closing a door behind you as you reach your glutes back to push the door close. You want your hips traveling backwards and forwards on a straight line, not up and down like a squat. As you can see right here, um, I preset my knees to have a slight knee bend right there, and then just think hips go back, hips go forward, slight knee bend, hips go back, hips go forward. This is a cue I like to use for my younger athletes or anybody that's new to the hip hinge, learning how to deadlift RDL. Remember, deadlifting or any type of strength training or resistance training is there to enhance your on-field performance. This is why we have to train upper body and lower body, and more importantly, train the lower body like an athlete. Here's an example of training the lower body that I like to call sports-specific training. If you're a pitcher or a hitter and you have trouble getting into internal rotation, whether it's your lead leg block or your loading hip as you're a hitter, I really like the RDL with single leg RDL with adduction. Um, really feel out the weights to get into that hip. Um, as you can see, I'm placing a prop or a foam roller against the wall to create a a pretty much a breaking system or a constraint that way I can get into my internal rotation internally rotated hip as I'm going into my um, single leg RDL this has numerous benefits to transfer over to getting to gaining more hip internal rotation which will ultimately lead to a better load and a better transition into your athletic movements now training strength is not the only aspect you need to train as an athlete you need to also train power and speed and right here, we have a power and speed-based exercise um, with a kettlebell uh, swing, making sure we're getting our hips back and forward, throwing those hips forward and backward as aggressive as possible. Now, as you are training your explosive power, you need to make sure you are testing along the way. We really like using the Proteus motion for this tool and especially the shot put exercise for the, the hitters to make sure their exit velocity is going up. And this machine, or sorry, with this machine, I like to test um, watts, rotational power, acceleration, and also I can check the heat map to see where the highest force is being generated at. In terms of generating force, we want to make sure we can accept force and redistribute force. And I really like doing this with the exercise, the depth drop to overhead toss with a medicine ball. It's limited equipment. It's basic athletic movement, absorb force, produce force with a little bit of a jump, and then just kind of seeing where the ball path goes really enjoyed this exercise for power production with my athletes. What should you train first? You're probably asking yourself this as I've gone through a few different things in this video. The most important thing is having a very foundational, strong baseline of strength. Once you have that, then you can start producing force, accepting force, and being safer in different positions. The most common flaw I see with the RDL or any type of hip hinge movement is the rounding of the back. The next two flaws we see are squatting the weight versus hinging with the weight and then also putting the neck up in the air and really blasting through our cervical spine. If we can avoid these three common mistakes, we're on, we're well on our way.